Today we have a review of the new PAX Plus, which together with the PAX Mini is the first major release from PAX in the last five years. In this video, we'll unbox, review the features, load and use it, and talk about the performance and what could have been better. I'll also share some tips that will help you get the most out of your packs if you already own one. I included links and coupon codes to all the products I'll mention in this video in the description below. And just a reminder, I give all my review units, which I have a lot, to subscribers of this channel. So subscribe for a chance to get a free vape. More info on that is in the pinned comment below. All that said, let's unbox. So the kit contains PAX Plus vaporizer unit, two mouthpieces, flat and raised, two oven lids, full oven or half oven, a concentrate insert, a USB-C charger, a cleaning brush, replacement screens, and an oven tool. The PAX Plus keeps the same iconic and minimalistic design the brand is known for. Seriously, the exact same design. PAX has been called the iPhone of vaporizers many times in the past, and it's easy to see why. The finish of the PAX Plus feels exactly the same as my iPhone or my MacBook. There are no buttons on its surface, only the four iconic pedal-shaped LEDs on the front and the magnetic charging connector in the back. The vape is just under 4 inches tall and is shaped like a rounded rectangle. Feels good and balanced while holding and easily conceals in my palm or fits in my pocket. The form and dimensions are practically identical to the PAX 3, which means that the oven lids, mouthpieces and charging accessories are cross compatible between both devices and the PAX Mini as well. The oven is at the bottom of the vape and it is covered with a magnetic lid. It is made from stainless steel and has a capacity of nearly a half a gram or a quarter gram when using the half oven lid. PAX also comes with a concentrate insert, which can be used with dabs and extracts, but extract typically creates a mess and residue and stickiness, so I recommend using the PAX exclusively with flour and using a separate vape pen for extracts. I linked my favorite wax pens in the description below. The mouthpiece is on the opposite side of the oven, and again, a very familiar design here of flat and raised mouthpiece options. The flat mouthpiece is flush with the top of the vape and has a little slit where I'll put my lips to inhale. The raised mouthpiece is a little more comfortable to use, but it will reduce vapor production. The draw is a little more restricted with a flat mouthpiece, which reduces airflow and when air moves slower, the heat builds up in the oven, creating better extraction and more potent vapor. That's why it's recommended to take slow and steady inhales when using a dryer vape. Or in other words, sip, don't rip. Fast moving air cools down the oven. So I like the raised mouthpiece in terms of convenience, but I like the flat one in terms of performance. I usually go for the flat one. The vapor path runs between the oven and the mouthpiece and is made from medical grade stainless steel. It is sealed and separated from the rest of the internal components, such as the battery and the heating element. This creates a clean air path that keeps the vapor pure and flavorful. The vape has sensors that will detect when the device is being used or put down and will trigger standby mode indicated by a blue wavy X. So, in other words, the vape adapts to your vaping style. If you're holding the vape and taking back-to-back -back drawers, it will keep heating active. But if you take your time between inhales and lay it down on the table occasionally, it will enter standby mode and optimize the temperature to preserve battery and flower. Moving the device or starting to inhale will exit standby mode and bring it back up to the set temperature. There's also haptic feedback to communicate statuses such as ready to vape. PAX is a conduction vaporizer, so it works best with a tightly packed oven. When packed correctly, it can fit around a half a gram. You can use the oven tool to tamp it down and create a little brick from the flour. This will transfer heat efficiently and improve the extraction. To microdose, use the included half oven lid, but either way, the key to good vapor with this vape is to pack it down nice and tight. So if you wiggle the device, nothing falls out. One quick press on the mouthpiece to turn the packs on and it starts heating up immediately. It is indicated by a wavy purple X. The Plus comes with four activation modes. To toggle between them, I'll hold the power button for two seconds and then single click to toggle. Blue is the lowest and it's also called stealth mode. It minimizes visible vapor and dims the LEDs. Then green and yellow, which I typically use. And finally red, which is the highest setting. It's also known as boost mode. And this is also the setting that we'll use with concentrates. 
Long press again or a little shake will confirm the settings and heat up to that setting. When the X turns green, it's time to vape. I've been using the PAX Plus for a couple of weeks now and I did notice an improvement in vapor production and extraction efficiency over the PAX 3. The first couple of hits are usually excellent, very rich and flavorful, then the flavor and vapor quality slowly degrade, as is the case with all other drier vapes, and towards the end of the session the vapor becomes a little warm and harsh. And while the vapor quality here is very good, it is still not as good as you can get from a larger vape such as the Mighty Plus, but hey, Pax is a fifth of the Mighty's size and almost half its price. Pax easily has the best vapor quality of vapes its size. The heat up time is super quick at only 20 seconds and the battery lasts 6 to 9 sessions on a full charge. This is impressive. Considering the size of the Pax, it is more powerful than expected. Here is what could have been better. Much like other small form vapes, such as the IQ or the Firefly 2, Pax gets a little warm towards the end of the session, as heat has nowhere to dissipate. Vapes such as the Crafty Plus or the Mighty Plus use fins to keep your fingers away from the hot body and allow air to pass pass through and cool the vape. Small vapes get warm much more quickly. There are a few ways to combat this warming issue. Number one, the oven is at the bottom. So try holding the vape from the top half, not the bottom half. Number two, during warm up, hold the packs in your hand so the heat can dissipate into your hand instead of staying trapped inside the device. Number three, reduce the temperature or intensity of use. But who wants to do that? The second issue I have with this vape is its charger. I think there is no excuse for not making this vape charge with a USB-C. I mean, the magnetic charger is great, but it has to be in addition, not instead of a plug-in. Even the charger plug of the magnetic charger is a regular USB connection and not a USB-C. I think this doesn't fit the technology forward mentality of the brand and having a proprietary charger means that if you're traveling and forgot that charger at a hotel room, then your PAX is pretty much worthless. Let's talk about the PAX Plus versus the PAX 3. So, as I mentioned, everything here is identical. Here are the few changes that I've noticed. PAX 3 has a smartphone app. It looks like that functionality has been removed with the PAX Plus. PAX also changed the bottom screen to a 3D screen, which just means that the edges are raised a little bit, so it's easier to remove. Also, PAX doesn't disclose any info about what changed internally, but I think I noticed slightly better vapor production and extraction, so I believe improvements have been made to the heating element, but there's no confirmation of that. Everything else is the same, all parts and accessories are cross-compatible, and the devices are built on the same exact platform. Then with the PAX Plus, PAX also released a smaller, trimmed-down version of the PAX called the PAX Mini. Here is what's the same and what is different between the versions. So the same is the heat up time of 20 to 30 seconds and also the runtime of 6 to 8 sessions. The differences are the Mini is $100 cheaper, the Mini is slightly smaller, the Mini is only compatible with flour, the Plus can be used with concentrates as well. The oven size is a quarter gram on the Mini versus a half a gram with a Plus or a quarter gram with a half oven lid of the Pax Plus. And then the warranty term is 10 years on the Plus and two years on the Mini. The Plus has more accessories included, the Mini has only one heat setting versus four with the Pax Plus. So here is the bottom line. Not a lot has changed from the PAX 3, but PAX has always offered the best performance to size ratio of any small form dryer vaporizer. And this plus is no different. PAX doesn't do one thing perfectly, but it's very good at everything. It doesn't have the best flavor and it doesn't have the best efficiency, but it is the best and most premium small form vape available today. It produces consistent results and is durable and long lasting. I haven't used my PAX 3 in a while, and this new version reminded me how much I enjoy this vape and how perfect it is to use while out and about. If you vape mostly at home, consider a larger vape, such as the Mighty Plus or the Crafty Plus, they're a little more powerful and will get better extraction. But if you vape mostly out of the house and need something discreet and portable, the PAX is easily your best bet. I've listed my top 10 dryer vapes with coupon codes in the description below as well, so check that out if you're looking to buy a new vape. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you found this helpful, and I'll see you next time.